Mononychus Design All dinosaurs are bizarre to us, that is their nature. That being said, there are some groups that resemble some critters we still see today. Crocs, ostriches, and crows. Some share some similar body parts with modern animals, like the sauropods or armored dinosaurs. However, there are some super specialized groups of extinct dinosaurs that just go the extra mile in weirdness. One of those groups is the Alvarosauria. These guys were small to medium sized theropod dinosaurs that sort of resembled the ostrich dinosaurs. They ran about on long, gawky legs, had unremarkable tails and torsos, medium length but skinny necks, small, pointed, and beaked skulls, but the weirdest part is their arms. The majority of the members of this group carried around a pair of some of the shortest arms among the dinosaurs, far shorter comparatively than the tyrannosaurs. The bones of these arms were squashed and enlarged. They were heavily reinforced and sprouted all sorts of flanges for muscle support. The fingers were mostly reduced or entirely gone except for one absolutely giant finger that was capped by a huge recurved claw. The largest and most well-known member of this group is the Mononychus. The prehistoric planet Mononychus is reconstructed using the style guide of a barn owl. I personally don't like using the color schemes of living animals on extinct ones because it is mathematically difficult to explain how the exact same colors and patterns came about in two different animals that are doing completely different things. However, I think the prehistoric planet team did a really good job of changing up the barn owl coloration and pattern enough to make it something more unique. This Mononychus is covered in simple filamentous feathers across its body and more complex ones on its arms and tail. Evidence from CT scans of the internal ear anatomy of the alvarosaur Shuvuya shows that Mononychus and Kin were owl-like in hearing abilities and likely had facial discs, hence the owl-like coloration, but also the owl-like soft tissues on the face and its general twitchy mannerisms. Behavior the overall reduced size and proportions of the arms, but enlargement and reinforcement of singular bones and reduction of the hands to just a big pick-like claw are a set of traits seen only in animals that hunt for social insects by using their forelimbs to tear open hard substrates. The anteaters, pangolins, and some armadillos, and maybe even the Triassic drepranosaurs. So, this is also the best guess for how alvarosaurs fed. The Mononychus digs up termites from dead wood, not a termite mound. Traces of wood nesting termites are common in some Cretaceous deposits, whereas it is disputed whether mound building termites were present in the Mesozoic at all. Termite eaters also often have a long tongue. A tongue skeleton, the hyoids, is preserved in one alvarosaur specimen and reported to be well developed. A toothless tip of the lower jaw may have allowed a long tongue to protrude. Alvarosaurs had awfully long legs for their size, which probably helped them not only escape predators, but also travel efficiently for long distances. And as mentioned in the episode, alvarosaurs may have traveled a lot, for insect colonies can be very widely dispersed. The newest alvarosaur discovery shown in prehistoric planet is their great hearing. A study a few years ago found that they had similar inner ear structures to barn owls, which hunt primarily by ear. Some modern termite eaters like the bat-eared fox listen for prey too. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, like this video, drop a comment in the comment section below, and hit the bell icon to stay in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching.